What's up, guys? Hello, Bass. Rich Lindgren here. It's Friday. We are on the road to our next destination, which is Lake Minnewaska. I'm practicing for a tournament that's coming up next week. Uh, so we'll be practicing tonight over the weekend. We've got some rods in the back. We've got the kitty back there behind the, the, the vehicle here. So we'll get on the water a little bit. Spend a few hours looking around the lake tonight. We'll check in from there. And let's see how this weekend goes. We'll be camping. Show you my setup for that. Should be a good video. Stay tuned. All right. Made it to the lake. It's about 6 p.m., a little after. We are going to just be out here for probably two, three hours tonight. This day's late in Minnesota. Um, going to be looking at dual maps to run avionics in Lake Master during practice. Big of the lake. Just going to bop around. No real agenda tonight. Probably look at just kind of make a lap around the lake, uh, see what it looks like. Kind of just probably test a few things, see what the lake looks like, and then tomorrow will probably be a lot of graphing and map research and, and looking deep because we'll have a long 10, 12, 13 hour day tomorrow. So stay tuned, we'll see what happens. First bite of the night. Looked at a few docks back here, kind of sandy, not much weeds. I got in an area where there's a little more grass around the docks, and I started instantly seeing like little perch and bluegills all over it. A little chunker. So there you go. A little bit of a clue. Could be a deal. Worm bass on the old 48. First fish on the 48. Not real big. Be a small keeper. Right off the end of that dock. Swimming it. <laughs> Not real big, but he smoked it. The little guy ate it pretty good. All right, in night one, we caught a few fish, nothing big. Fish from deep, fish from shallow, pecked around. Set a baseline of about seven to eight pounds. So I think I can catch a limit, no problem in this lake, but we need to find some bigger fish. We got the boat all plugged in, battery set. We're gonna put the cover on it, set up camp, and get after it tomorrow. So this is the glamorous life of uh, tournament bass fishing on a budget and camping. So I'll probably tomorrow night show you a little more of the setup, but tonight we're just gonna set it up, call it a wrap. See you tomorrow. All right, day two, check-in. It's about 10, 30 in the morning. A little rainy, a little windy this morning, so I really didn't bother to put the GoPro on. Um, we kind of hunting, pecking around. Caught a few fish shallow, kind of went out here looking for some deeper fish. Kind of looking for small eyes and catching a lot of largemouth on jerk baits. So, kind of covering this flat. So, I thought I'd throw the GoPro on and see if I get any more bites on the jerk baits. So, stay tuned. Jigwormy fish. 
catching fish has really not been an issue, but catching anything over two pounds has been tricky thus far. So that's what we're going to need for the tournament. I don't think catching a limit is going to be an issue. So we'll have to figure something out. Drop shot fish. Feels like a better fish. Not a giant, but a little bit better quality here. That's a nice fish. Nice two something. And that old jig worm. Just broke one off right before that, about the same size. So a little bit deeper edge here, just a little bit nicer fish. <clears throat> Throw my dinger up a little bit. Nice thing is you can always bite them down. Fish them a little bit shorter. Jig worm action. Found another little school here. He's spending biggins. that jig worm down, put on a jig, got me a little bit fatter one. Well, that's three fish in a row, so we'll probably leave this spot in a row alone. Not giants, but a step up from what we've been catching, so. This is what the good coontail grass looks like on cyan imaging. This is what we're looking for. This is what the fish have been in their practice so far. This is what we'll be looking for the rest of the day. Nice clumpy stuff, fairly high, thick. Little patches where it's clean, where the fish can sit there and ambush. That's the good stuff right there.
probably one of the nicest fish I've caught. Just went up shallow for a minute here. I saw a little inflow of water here. There's some shade in this tree behind me. Old Miki Stinger on a jig head up shallow. Not a bad fish. Good, not a giant, but always fun to catch small in the top water. I saw some other shadows that look a little bigger than this one. Kind of a little shallow rock spot. High sun. Looks like they're up there feeding. Let's see if we can get some more. Did you see that blow up? I don't know. under the boat so I dropped my drop shot right next to the boat nice little smolly a lot of people don't understand is that in the summertime and you get sunny conditions like this smallies will get up shallow and you can actually sight fish them while they're cruising they get really aggressive you can catch them and even see them in big ones, not just little ones like this. Oh boy, it feels like a good one. <laughs> see that jump? He's 10 pounds. Jump for us. Show us another jump. There's a bunch of them follow him around. Come on, come here, girl.
beautiful smallmouth. Look at the colors on that one. You gotta get a picture of this one. Be right back. All right. So full day today, second day. Pretty good. Caught a lot of fish. The camera wasn't always running, but I turned it on a few times to show you guys a few fish. Caught them shallow, caught them deep. Caught little ones, caught medium ones, caught a couple decent ones, caught some green ones, got some brown ones. I feel pretty good. Like I feel like I have a pretty good mix of options for the tournament. And we got one more full day tomorrow of practice. So we're going to wrap it up a little bit early so I can grill something. Maybe do a little video of the campsite, let you know how I, uh, how I camp and how I rough it for tournaments and practice. And uh, get ready for day three and charge these batteries. All right, end of a long day on the water for like 12 hours. Here is home for tonight and last night. So, firing up the little grill. Gonna cook some brats. Boat's tucked in. Batteries are charging. Put the cover on here in a minute before the bugs get too bad. And I don't tent because I don't like wrapping up wet tents on the day I have to go home or the tournament mornings. And I don't like setting them up and drying them out when I get home. So I prefer to use the back of my vehicle, my SUV, and make myself a little bed back here. Got several layers of different foam padding, mattresses, different levels of sleeping bags and blankets, depending if it's warm or cold. The cooler goes in there, the clothes are in there, everything I need. Kind of chill in there at night. And the key to making this work, because if you've tried this in the summertime, you get super hot. I've made these screens for my windows out of corrugated and screen material. And I covered it with blue duct tape so it doesn't look as janky. Um, but basically, it all sandwiches in, keeps the bugs out, allows the airflow. I have a fan that I can plug in with a cord in case I'm not getting a breeze. And that's how I do it. I like being connected to my boat because then nobody messes with my stuff. It's secure, campgrounds are pretty safe, nobody messes with anything. Get to be outside, I mean we fish to be outside and might as well camp while we're out fishing and uh, this is how it works. So we'll be firing up the brats and chilling here a little bit and uh, get ready for one more day of practice. Beautiful calm morning, Sunday. Gonna wrap up practice, do a half day probably. Probably gonna check a few spots this morning that I wanna start, see how they are with the top water, and then look at a little more water in different parts of the lake so I can be ready for any wind. So, not sure how much filming we'll do today, but we'll probably capture a little bit and then uh, wrap it up and get ready for the tournament. So if you fish surfacing, I don't know if I'm throwing the wrong top water. They're really just not in the top water, the largies this morning. So we'll keep hopping around. <laughs> it's a nice little weed line fish, a little better than average jigworm fish out here. Just working on expanding the patterns and expanding the water today. Boy, he is in a predicament there. Got him wrapped in a bow. Dark one. Well, there it is. Practice is in the books. Spent two 
two and a quarter, two and a half days on the water. Actually caught a lot of fish. Uh, kind of impressed with the lake. Um, some, quite a few fish small, but there's some decent quality out there. Didn't catch any real giants. Caught some three pounders probably. Um, caught fish in a lot of different things. Jerk baits, top water, flipping, uh, shallow, deep, jig worms, drop shots. Uh, pretty much everything in between. It seems like if you got around the fish, they were going to bite. Um, so I think there's a lot of options. I covered a lot of the lake. I graphed a lot of the lake. I feel like I have quite a few spots where I can catch a decent limit. Um, and kind of play the wind and then just kind of pivot how the day unfolds. I can try for largemouth. I can try for smallmouth. I'll probably, you know, fish until I feel like the fish I have been catching offshore kind of cap out get a decent limit and then I'll probably just go fish new water shallow hoping to find a big fish so as of now that's my game plan not going to practice anymore so I don't think the game plan will change too much uh, get the boat draw find out who my am partner is on Thursday night and uh, the next video should be the tournament video so uh, I'll put a few links for some gear of the, the baits that work best on Lake Minnewaska this weekend for late July uh, at least in practice and then uh, Stay tuned and uh, subscribe so you don't miss the tournament video. Uh, let me know what you think of the practice uh, and uh, what you like about these tournament videos. And uh, we'll catch you next time and hopefully help you suck less.